Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. This is such an exciting episode. I have my girls with me, Stephanie and Taylor. Of course, they need no introduction because you guys know them by now. But of course, if you don't know them by now, their channels will be down in the description box below so you can hop over and subscribe to them as well. Now, something that I'm going to bring up before we even get started, we talked about this before coming on air and we drew some cards on it and we got that I need to say this. So I only got an hour of sleep last night and I'm, I feel fine. I'm good. I'm good. Um, but every time this particular entity releases a video, I get attacked that night. And of course, this particular entity is releasing a video on somebody else's platform that she seems to have taken over. But here's a little, little message to this entity. I know what you're doing. I've known what you're doing. It's Stephanie and Taylor know what you're doing. When we saw the video, it was so obvious. Your spell casting is so fucking obvious. Like you're not hiding it at this point. And you can't take me down. I'm sorry. I know you want to take me down. I know you're using my natal chart. I know you want to steal my energy. That's what you're doing for whatever nefarious purposes you have up your sleeve, but it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's just going to backfire on you. I am protected and I am so much stronger than you are. I am of the light and the light will always chase out the darkness. So your days are numbered. I think you know that though. I think that's why you're throwing everything at the wall right now and throwing your little demonic temper tantrum because your days are numbered. We also know that the military is watching you. So have fun with that sister. All right. Now let's get started. Oh God. <laughs> this is a bad I don't want to mess with you, man. <laughs> I am done. And I'm going to say this too. And I've said this many times before. Yes, this month has been hell on earth for me having to learn all this stuff. But what the devil will make for bad, God will use for good. And this situation has opened me up and opened my eyes up to who I am, who these ladies are, who we all are. And this is fucking biblical. You don't mess with God. And that's what you're trying to do right now. And we are, the, yep. Those are beautiful. <laughs> you want to tell them what that says, Stephanie? Those cards? The universe. This is a card that you don't see in most tarot decks. Beautiful. So this is talking about very drastic changes, kind of like a tower card in a way. Um, but this is like orchestrated by the universe. And then we have the sun card. And the sun makes everything better. Because we're the light. Because we're of the light. It's just and it's darkness comical. cannot overcome the light because you need light to shine in the darkness. You can't see the you can't see the how how am I trying to put this here? You can't <laughs> shine the dark into the light. You gotta shine the light into the dark. Right. Yep. Yep. And it's kind of comical. Like I, I mean, of course I'm I'm very worried about my friends. We we are very worried about our friends and we think about them all the time. But her antics are getting comical at this point because so obvious. You are fine. It's obvious. It's so it obvious. So obvious. It's so obvious. I've gotten countless emails, countless DMs on Twitter. People know what's going on. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's two people that don't know what's going on that are being played for fools right now. But hopefully, one day we can help with their healing. But um, it's obvious you are not fooling anybody. We know who you are. We know what you are. We know what you do in your spare time. We know about the party drug you do in your spare time. We know the coven that you're associated with. We know who your other coven members are. We know that what's going on in Dallas is associated with what you're doing too. We know everything, honey. We know everything. How do we know this? Because we have off world or help right now. And one day, one day when this is over, we'll talk more about that. Um, but <laughs> your days are numbered. <laughs> the so lovers I, I and the, the sun. sun and the lovers card. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> you can try to use my chart. You can try to be me, but you're not me. So you just keep trying because your days are numbered. The tower <laughs> is coming very soon. All right, ladies. So this is a very special episode because we're gonna we got some some subscriber questions, and I'm super excited because we can make this video about <laughs> our friends who are watching right now. Um, I am gonna be putting links to both uh, Stephanie and Taylor's like Venmo and PayPal. If you do get your answer question and you want to send a little tip to them. 
that would be appreciated, but you don't have to, of course, um, but that will be an option down in the description box below. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about card hygiene, let's say, because I think it's a super important and something that I've learned recently, since we're getting into these divination tools, and more and more people are learning how to use them. Do y'all want to speak on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. You can go ahead um, and go first stuff. You can tell what you I, do. I sage my card. I smudge my cards every time I use them. Um, or it, in addition to that, if I'm reading on something very negative, like the energies we were just talking about, and I'm trying to deep dive into those, those particular energies, as soon as I'm done reading those energies, I smudge again. And I use the dragon's blood. Yeah, you've got to like the string coming off it. But I mm -hmm. use this as a protection too, because I, I dragon's blood, I believe, is a protectant. Um, for smudging. And so I do that and I have my crystals with me and I make sure I have my black tourmaline around me when I do read um, because that absorbs the psychic energy. But also too, if you're reading constant negative energies, um, you do want to give your cards a rest at times so they can uh, ground. It's like a grounding for your cards. Is that, am I saying that right, Taylor? Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, abs I absolutely agree with you 100%. It's grounding for your cards. And on top of that, um, another really good way to rest your cards is put them back in a uh, numerical order. So you'll start with the beginning of the major arcana and you'll move through the cups and then so on and so forth, going ace all the way down to king. Um, and that's a really good way whenever you rest them. You can rest them with selenite on top of them too. Sun is really good um, for cleansing too. There's so many, there's so many different tools and ways that you can cleanse your cards. Um, and also between reads, especially if you're a busy reader or if you've been busy, like kind of like what stuff said, if you, like definitely say like saging is going to, well, cards just flew at me. Sorry, queen of cups. Um, <laughs> saging is really, really important. And then even when I like change, I'm with the same client and I change my question, I'll even sometimes knock my card. And if you have a palm stone, a palm stone of, um, like black obsidian or tourlamine or selenite, um, I can, I sometimes do that too, to clear energy. Just like I release any energy. And then also, I think Steph and I are both going to talk about this. The most important thing when you're using a spiritual tool, whether it's a pendulum, whether it's cards, whatever that is, that you're, even when you're just like sitting there and you're ready to ground your energy, like the first thing you do is always put protection around you. I actually, I have a pink orb with a uh, sacred ge ge geometry that I put around me, but I know everyone else has different ways. You can put your roots into the ground. Um, you can just picture a crystalline light showering over you. There's so many different tools to do that, but also setting your intentions, setting your intentions that only the highest, most divine source beings, my soul family for my highest good source for the highest good, my higher self for the highest good and setting your intentions that way. That way, you know, you're getting your pure channel, right? Because we just, and, and, and it doesn't mean like if you don't, you're not safe, but also just solidifying your connections also going to make your connections stronger too. But yeah, I always, that's one thing that I think is really important is making sure you're connecting with that. <laughs> yes. I actually do that now. I was telling the ladies, even before I meditate or pray now, I ask, ask for only this whole situation with this entity entity has taught me a lot more about spiritual warfare. And so I've asked and knowing that I've been stalked for a year now, um, through remote viewing, through watching my channel, all that natal chart stuff. Um, I now take that very seriously. When I sit down to meditate or pray, I ask for only my guides that are here for my highest good and anybody else, excuse my language, anybody else can fuck off because you're mm -hmm. not welcome. Um, and that's you not consenting. And so, and it does help. It does really, really help. Um, so I think that's, I mean, with pendulums, like sometimes you have to cleanse your, clean your pendulum too, right? Like I rested mine by selling. Yes, mine is, I rest selenite on my pendulum every day. Yeah. I wake up with selenite around me. <laughs> yeah. Selenite guys. So here's my selenite. I call it my magic wand. Oh my yeah. It's huge. I love that's it. Huge. I, mean, I actually have selenite all over my house actually. Yeah. I have one yeah. of those over there yeah. on the other side of the bed. I put these, I ordered a bunch of these and I just threw in every room, like everywhere you can find one of these in my house. Selenite's amazing. It like recharges all of your stones. It also helps you sleep. So if you have sleep issues, like selenite helps. When I had my own program, my own shala, I had selenite all over the room to help relax people in a stressful mm -hmm. practice. So this is my I magic selenite. selenite wand. Yep, okay. selenite right there. Right. So I actually was told one time I was having some slight knee issues, uh, which is not which is rare for me. I don't sometimes my knee will hurt, sometimes it won't. But this was like years ago, and I had a healer tell me to put selenite. That's actually when I got this selenite rested on my <laughs> knee 
to get the swelling to go down. That's when I got this, this magic wand and selenite is self-cleansing. So it's not like you have to actually cleanse your selenite. So it's kind of like that, uh, one-stop shop of, uh, <laughs> miracle stones that God created. So right. yes, selenite is awesome. 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 All right, ladies, y'all ready to, um, so before we ask these questions, why don't you guys go ahead and show, since we're talking about cleansing and card hygiene, do you want to show the audience like what you do before you start a reading? Like what you ask, is that okay to do? Yeah. Do you want me to go ahead and put that around us stuff? Okay. So just in this here now moment, you guys can close your eyes if you want to, you don't have to, whatever feels necessary. So in this here now moment, as we are about to tap in for the highest good for all of these questions that are before us, we lovingly ask that only divine source light, highest good beings that serve the Christ consciousness, source consciousness, and our expressions of source beings and our soul family for our highest good are welcome to participate today. We are safe, we are protected, and we are able to gather whatever information we need that serves the highest good. And so it is. And I sometimes will just do that in my, in my head too, but I just did it out loud since we're all just going to work together in this here now moment. It also connects all of our heart centers so that all of us are able to get to the same information at the same time too. Yes. Taylor, question for you. Yeah. Because I have so many readers and groups now, would you be able to maybe type that little shindig yeah. you just did? Yeah. I, I can so I can send it to my groupies. Yeah. I have a lot of requests right now to do um, like clearings for people like, and just record it on my YouTube and I can, I'll type those out and then I'll record them and I'll send them. And then I also got requests for inner, my inner child visualization. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. And you, you can go talk to the little one in a safe place too. That makes, it's, it's one of the best visualizations I've ever had come to my mind. Um, but yeah, I can, I can do some stuff and I'll, I'll get those. When you get a moment, I mean, it doesn't have to be right away, but I think that would be awesome to, um, for people to have a copy of something like that. Yours is a little bit more, um, well, you're, you've been doing this a lot longer than I have. So, um, mine is a little more simplified than that. And I like what you just did there. So it's actually a compliment. So, um, I think that'd be great if that was, even if you were to, uh, be on the phone with me and I can even type it up as you're talking. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm a fast I got you. typer. I got you, girl. No worries. Right. That's Absolutely. awesome. Well, I'm so glad we said that because I don't, I think a lot of people who, you know, are starting to, to tap into our intuitive arts and people are starting to play with these tools that they need to know that you actually, we know that divination tools can be manipulated. We know that they can be manipulated. If you're and not, we have careful. to take them back. Like this, this is at the point where like, these are our tools. Like I feel like Bryce, every time you say this, it, it hits me in such a spot because I feel like it's truth. I feel like a lot of the stuff that comes through your, your throat center is true. So that's why I get really excited, but I really, really resonated with the fact that you said that the only, only good, only God, only creator can create only the light can create and that everything else they've taken and they distorted and they made it inorganic and they shifted yeah. it. That really resonated with me because it's true. Like, these tools, they're meant for us to find divine purpose, go within, use as use as assistance. And those even got taken from us. And that that's kind of upsetting. I'm, I'm sure, Steph, you're probably like, mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I went how many years thinking these things were satanic. And here I'm, this is my pure enjoyment is helping people yeah. with cards. And one thing I just want to point out too, um, before we do start reading the cards is this is specifically for the audience just because we're reading cards on certain questions. And I say this on my channel too, with my new um, videos is that please use your own intuition and tap into your own heart center and everything like that. Um, and make sure that any kind of decisions that we're um, reading in the cards, you also discern for yourself as well, because the cards are a tool. However, uh, we shouldn't be relying on solely just the cards, but our own, um, you know, crown and heart and chakras and everything like that. And, and, grounding ourselves and understanding what our own intuition and gut feelings are telling us to. So I just want to put that out there. Yeah. They are just a tool. You are the vessel. That's so right. Exactly. I, I, yes. Me too. I know <laughs> it's something that resonates, might not resonate with you now. <coughs> um, it might resonate with later too. It's remember that we are in, of course, the 3d realm moving up 
thank goodness. Um, but remember that time is re like, it is relevant here. Time does exist here, but when we're looking quantumly too, time doesn't exist necessarily, but it is in this realm. I know that's like a We're finding out time doesn't exist in the quantum realm. <laughs> I guess yeah, the quantum is very quantum. <laughs> that's a very frustrating thing that can be with cards is because people want a direct answer, like how long and the cards really can't can't I, tell. Yeah, they're yeah. very literal there's no there's no like gray yes. area with cards it's very black and white and yes. the thing i also want to point out is like cards when we're reading the cards it's almost like we're giving uh, a prophecy um by the visual that we're seeing and prophecies don't happen right away so mm -hmm. like we we know kim clement was this prophet who prophesied about the times that we talk about often but that was seven years before things started actually to take off so um that's important yeah. to also know is that you know, we're not talking about timing with a lot of these things and the cards are very literal. And, and, and when you talk to beings too, um, like I have, I, I've been dealing with the Octarians recently and they, I love the Octarians. They're very healing collective. I see them every time I see them the night before I, the night before I'm in my bed and I see these big, beautiful bl beings, blue beings. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to talk to Octarians tomorrow. And when I was, when they were talking, they also were like, you kind of know better than the ass time, but they were very helpful. They, they give a lot of symbolism, like, um, like a water boiling, things like that. So just know that like things are taking off in the now moment guys. It's just, as far as like predicting dates, that's, that's very difficult because we're, mo we're going by moves at this point and it is moves, honey. We're yeah. <laughs> you know, what I've been asking my guides for, um, and source God for is, is a peace in my heart to help me find that peace just mm -hmm. to accept, you know, that, that I want to, I want to schedule I wanna the itinerary. I want to know when this is going to happen. I want appointments, but that's not the way that God works. And that's not the way that the realms above us work. And our soul doesn't work that way. That's our, that's our 3d mind. That's been conditioned to have this you know, point A to point B to point C, you know, and I love, I was telling Tamara this morning, Taylor, about how you say, like, when, when you ask about stuff and they always laugh, we don't want to ruin the surprise. <laughs> they get like giddy about it. Like we don't want to ruin the surprise. Even I'm getting you know? giddy. <laughs> so, so it's like, you know, we know good things are coming. We're like little children waiting for Santa Claus right now. Like we don't want to ruin the surprise. And so, so when the cards do give you answers, just know that it might be a, a minute before that, prophecy unroll, it pr it pr fulfills itself and i know for me because I've, I've been like having tarot card readers readings for a long time even before, before youtube and there's some times that i'll go to a reader and i really trust and something in the cards it's not what i want to hear mm -hmm. and that can be really really hard but it's almost like sometimes i mean we i spoke about this catherine and medina yesterday sometimes those expectations when they're not met the alternative is always better mm -hmm. So that's amazing. You just said that. Cause when I, when I have sessions, I literally tell people, I say, come in with intentions. What do you want from this session, but no expectations. And that goes full circle to what you were talking about too. When something comes to fruition, hold in your knowing that nine of cups, which is wish fulfillment, hold in that knowing, keep visualizing it, keep feeling it. It's yours. Say it's yours, but bring yourself into this now moment and be flexible about how you get there intentions yep. <laughs> intentions are everything <laughs> yep. Charlie Ward says I know the destination but I don't know the journey like I know where we're going but I don't know that we might get some bumps and we might take a roller coaster ride to get there but we know where we're going so <laughs> yeah. I love that I love that all right so should we start with the first question sure so Nancy has been thinking about taking Reiki training she wants to know what the cards say about this and I'm going to expand upon this if you guys want, Nancy, I hope you don't mind. Since she's been thinking about doing Reiki training, is that her soul telling her about potentially a new dharmic path for her in this new world where we're going to need healers and there, my, okay. So my heart, so I, I, so when I do reads for people, I'm sorry, I, I, my channel comes in too. Um, so yes, but there's more she's not just Reiki. It's, it's like that once she comes online with those healing gifts, like Reiki will be a part of it and it'll be a wonderful tool in her tool belt. But I'm also seeing, um, old Lumerian crystal healing chambers. Um, so she has something to do with the crystalline healing chamber and she's done it in many lives too, but the Reiki is going to be a great tool for her to harness these gifts that she, so what they're telling me is she already has, she already could do Reiki intuitively, but if she feels like she needs to get the education and stuff like that, absolutely. Like I, I'm getting a yes, but obviously we'll move forward. With I mean, I, I, I heard a yes too. 
Yeah. <laughs> You can't go wrong with taking Reiki training, you know, like, like I, well, I had a, a gentleman come to me and he, uh, he was like, well, I'm going to take these really rigorous herbalism, uh, courses. And I was like, um, so mother earth is telling me like, you don't have to do that, but if you want to do it, because it's like in your blood. And I was like, you know what I mean? Like, go ahead and do it. You're going to be but the best at it. <laughs> you already know how to do this. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm getting from the cards here, she's actually gone through a lot of heartbreak in her this lifetime with that card. And so that's kind of been prepping her for things for her transition into this new um, endeavor. And um, I feel like she will get the training to do and she's actually been planning it for a while subconsciously with that card. And in her subconscious, um, she knows like she knows it's it's time. Yeah. And, and when your brain is asking the question, that's your subconscious telling you, hello. Your soul already knows. That. Yep. And then um, Queen of Pentacles. Ooh. With. And if you look at her, she's she's impregnated. So she's she's about to birth out new ideas, new healing techniques. Um, and actually, it looks like she might be um, leading in a... Um, healing center is what I'm hearing. Great job. That's so so that's awesome. That's, that's awesome, great. Nancy. So I think you got your yes. She totally did too. I was low key. Like I knew Steph was going to have some really goodies come out, but I got pretty much the same. I had the movement into this internal knowing that she knew all along it's a yes. And it's always been there within her. And it took her a really, really it took her really difficult situations in this lifetime that she chose to have. And I know that always sounds funny when I say that, but it took her really uh, difficult cir circumstances because it's almost like she's a healer because she knows what it feels like to need the healing. Right. Oh, for and sure. only the best healers are the ones that have been they went through hell and back and hell and back again. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's the shamanistic uh, walk, right? That's the training yeah. day. Yeah. And I think a lot of us are, have had very difficult lives and have, have had, some storms we've had to walk through. And now as we get to this point in the timeline, we, we realize why. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we all woke up when we did, because we'd, we'd had one of my favorite quotes is a religious person is a person who has never seen hell. A spiritual person is a person who's been to hell and back again. Oh, that's so good. I love, well, it. I love that. The best thing. I, I love like quotes. quotes on my that's another, that's another t-shirt, Bryce. That's that's another another t -shirt. I don't know who said that though. I can't remember who said that, but I heard it once. And I was like, Oh, I like it. Like it. Her name think. was her name was Nancy. Is that is that correct? Nancy, yeah. Nancy. Nan Nancy, it's it's Nancy's gonna be very good at this. Like I can I, I'm getting emotional because I feel like she needed to hear how special and how like this is in her blood and in her knowing. Like it's already there. I don't know. I just I just I feel really good about it. <laughs> she feels great. Her well, heart's Nancy, in her. <laughs> reach out to us and keep us posted on your training. We would love to hear how you're doing and how that's going. Because and if you if you do open up a center, if that's something you want to do, and if we're still on the YouTubes, I will promote your center. We'll do what we got to do to Thanks. get you out there, girl. Because if this is in your blood, then you're here for a reason. We're all here for a reason, but that we're, we're going to help promote God's purpose. One of God's purposes for you to help humanity. So <laughs> just posted Nancy. All right. So Kim asked, and this is not going to have to do with the cards. We talked about zero point before I've talked about it with Medina and she wants to know more about how to get to the zero point. Is it passion? Is it like, how would you guys, and we talked about, I like to listen to my Broadway musicals and like to like dance around in my living room. And that's how I get to that point of being at that zero point, that flow. But can you guys give more of a, a, a talk for Kim of how she, different tools she can do to bring her to that space? I find personally that a lot of um, zero point often incorporates um, some sort of creativity in a way, whether it's listening to music or whether it's painting or whether it's playing a musical instrument. Like for me, I have actually several zero points. Mm -hmm. My biggest zero point is playing my piano. That is one of my biggest zero points. When I'm playing my piano, the world uh, comes to a standstill. Nothing disturbs me. I feel very grounded in, in, in life. Um, and when I listen to certain types of music too, and it also activates my third eye when I do these particular type of activities. Um, I do a lot of painting as a zero point. Anything that I can just feel 
super grounded and one with the earth and one with the spirit and just not, I'm unstoppable in my zero point, if that makes sense. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Thanks, Seth. That was great. Um, my <laughs> mind's nature and automatic writing. Um, so I fill up these journals. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have to buy these very frequently because I'm, I like to write in my journal and I like to go outside. Um, and I, as you can see, I write a lot. Sometimes I draw too, if I see symbols and stuff like that too. But basically with, with the automatic writing for me, that's my zero point because I get some of the most beautiful messages in because I'm connected to nature too. And I always like treat myself when I'm in my zero point. So I go outside and make tea or a coffee that I'm craving. And I, I put those all together. But another thing that I also think about the zero point is also like the full energy. Like, so in the traditional tarot in the full, he's holding a little white flower and he's coming to the edge and he almost looks like he's kind of like leaping in the air, but the white flower represents innocence. And it makes me feel like what's that childlike thing you love to do? Well, if you don't know anymore, find out what makes your heart center almost explode because it's like my heart center connects best to my crown when I feel that joy. And that's how I get the information I need to come in. And it's also this divine feminine energy of allowance and allowing things to come in versus forcing. Because when you force, I know, I'm sure you guys know this too. Every time I've, I've tried to work and get better at things or channel or anything like that, like um, if I force it, it's not going to come through ever. Uh, it's like most unexpected times is when it comes through. And that's when I'm doing something I, I feel pure joy doing. So really start. And, and if you don't know what that is for you, start to get to know yourself again. I've been saying this a lot because we're all changing. We're changing really fast, right? So we got to figure out what we like now because it might not be the same anymore, right? No. Yeah, but I wanna, <laughs> I'm going to show you guys this. So I know that zero point isn't really an analytical topic, but a lot of people need that. There's a really good book. I've spoken about this book before. I lent my copy out and I haven't gotten it back, but my copy has notes all in it. A book called Flow. Now the author is Hungarian and has like 10 letters <laughs> in his last name and I cannot pronounce that. But he talks about the human brain when we get into that flow of that zero point where we're just flowing with with our soul basically we lose track of time and it's mm -hmm. it's it, he goes into all he studies people and how certain people get there so if you are someone who you need more of a like educational analytical approach to zero point then this is a really good book to read um and he also talks about how the human brain kind of screws us up sometimes and how we have to like turn our which is the whole practice of yoga how you have to turn the brain off in order to actually know yourself um so that i would suggest that for anybody now I'll, I'll put a link in the description box below to um to this book if that's something people feel like they need um like that crutch that a tool like the tarot card the tool to kind of get them to, to understanding more about that flow that zero point of of being able just to move through um without any connection to the matrix really so so all righty so let's see next question so gina wants to know if she will be opening up a horse healing center. I love that idea. I'll come to that. What's your name, Gina? Gina. It, it's going to help the horses and I'm seeing children there. I'm seeing children touch them. It's actually like, it's kind of making me emotional because I'm seeing little hands. Like that's what they showed me a bunch of little hands on the horses because horses, heart centers, the electromagnetic field. I know you guys know this, but like they're, they're huge. They're almost bigger than the horse themselves. So just interact. I feel like Catherine Edwards would probably say that's better than me. me. But <laughs> me and Gina, Gina with Catherine Edwards. Yes. 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 Yeah, horses are beautiful animals and horses and humans, as well as dogs and humans, there's specific animals that have very, very special relationships with humans and have had, they've been necessary for our survival. And so you feel about that love of horses, that a horse will literally carry you, you know, and, and that's beautiful. So absolutely. I could, I think, oh, wow. I think it's a bit like Nancy's question with the Reiki. I think we already know the answer to. <laughs> well, the, well, that's what I was about to say too, is the whole thing that you guys made a, if you're already asking these questions and projecting them to the universe and you're already seeing it in your head, but then it goes full circle to the like, well, I don't know how I'm going to necessarily make this happen. Where am I going to get the money? Well, low key, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. You guys have a lot of money that is karmically owed to a lot of you guys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like this is something I've been seeing recently and let go of, just take it, start taking it. So I saw a suitcase 
and start to start the journey. So, well, what can you start doing today? Can you start to write down like how many horses you think you can take in? Do you need to look at land? Do you need to start just, I don't know, look at, like whatever you need, feel like you need to start. I don't, I don't know how to start with that as far as the horse center, but as far as like a healing center, yeah. Wh- where can I start today and keep picturing it in my knowing that it's going to come, right? I love really that. Weird that you said that. This is definitely universally inspired. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not going to entirely look like in the new world what you think it will. So with the five of swords, oftentimes you're dropping down three swords and going to the two other swords. So just keep in mind, keep manifesting, keep manifesting that idea um, because it definitely is universally inspired. But again, you might have to make uh, some um, weeks. Some tweaks, yeah, because the new world, we don't know what that looks like. It's, it's almost impossible to completely know what it looks like. It also looks like you have some off-worlder help with that idea as well. Um, so I'm wondering if she's a star seed of some some sort. And it's going to bring some stability to your life. And it looks like subconsciously you've also been planning this, um, Gina. And I, so that's I, got, awesome. I got to that um, when you were saying what you were saying about studying stuff. And I... I for, you talked about the, the horse's heart center. Maybe something she can be doing is studying the energetic field of a horse and getting mm-hmm. to know, going and visit. If, if you maybe you already have horses, but if not, going and visiting people who train horses, talk to Catherine Edwards about about their oh. personalities, how they communicate. You know, really become like the horse whisperer, so that you understand them better and are are better equipped to then help them help with the healing process. I was just about to say, work on the telepathy with the horse. That's what I was about to say. Is that, so all three of us were thinking it. There you go, Gina. There's your confirmation on that. I've been trying to work with, um, trying to figure out what, what my dogs are saying telepathically. And it, it, it's like a muscle. It takes work. It's, you're not going to get it overnight. So start practicing now so that you can start communicating with your, you know, beloved animals. I'm assuming she has horses, but I just feel like she does. I could be wrong. No, I Let us know, Gina. I- I feel like there's, there's a special, once you have a connection with a horse or you had a connection with a horse, um, most of the time you're going to be very drawn to that animal. I've, I've noticed that with people who, who get to be in contact with horses, they, I they stay, them. they stay in contact yeah. with horses. <laughs> my grandfather, my mom's father who passed away when I was four, he was a horse fanatic and he was a surgeon. So he never rode horses because he was always afraid he was going to break his hands because that was what he did. But he, uh, oh my gosh, he had, when he, when my grandmother eventually passed away and we were pulling their house apart, I can't tell you how many oil paintings he had of horses all over that house. Like wow. some people just have that connection to horses, you know? So, so it is, it is special for people that, that deep connection to those, those, the, how powerful and magnificent of an animal they truly are. So good luck, Gina. Again, just like Nancy, please let keep us posted because that's exciting. All right. (laughs) So this is kind of an interesting one. And this is kind of interesting because before we started filming, we were discussing some um, programming that we noticed now that we're awake and we're going to probably be prepping a show to go on Rumble to talk about this kind of stuff that we can't talk about on YouTube. But I had a question. So there's a show called Wheel of Time that's on Uh, Amazon Prime right now. And I haven't started watching it, but I've heard about it. And someone wants to know, is Will of Prime on Amazon telling us the truth? And she went in to say that it kind of follows the theory that we now have that we're past the, we're in the post-apocalyptic world and we're fighting the final battle between Satan, dark and goodness, Satan and God. (laughs) So what do we know, ladies? What do we get? So So can you repeat the question one time? Wheel of time. Is it, is it talking about what's happening in the now moment? Like, is it a form of disclosure as well as, is it talking about the final battle of good versus evil? So that's gotcha. like the energy we're I'm going to have to look into that show. I know me too. I'm, I'm, supposed, don't, to, I've never I'm watched supposed to read it. That's like my guy. Well, so I, I read a lot guys. Like, and my problem is when I read, I, I like, I, I read all night and then I stop functioning. So I, I'm a reader like that. It, that's probably another one of my zero points. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Like that's me. And it's really bad. I have to take off like weeks to read a book because I, well, I read a book in like two nights and then I'll go down a whole series of them, but wheel of time I was told to buy. So that makes me think like a huge yes. If I was intuitively like drawn to 
want to. So while you are pulling cards, I'm going to specify for people who maybe missed that episode that we are starting to realize that we are not pre-apocalypse. We're not going through the apocalypse right now. We are post-apocalypse, meaning that if you look at the book of Revelation, we, we've already gone through the 1,000 years of peace. History's been manipulated. Satan was put back for a few hundred years. And now we are literally at the final battle, which makes sense because after this battle is complete, we will ascend. So, and we're already starting the ascension process anyway. So that's kind of where that's coming from. So what do y'all, what do y'all get with the cards? Okay. So first off, the energy overall is a yes. Also, whenever we get water to its rebirth, this is going to help push forward a rebirth. And also I know specifically people at my husband's work that are not awake. We're talking about this show and telling him to watch it. So it's getting talked about. And I just saw the wheel too. So it's kind of ironic because it's getting passed forward and passed forward. I actually don't think that, I think Amazon must've been taken over because they did not want to give it up. When you have a four of pentacles or a four of earth, they are holding on to dear life to that information. So there was a lot of assistance in order to get this information forward. But the, the irony that I'm also getting, like, of course the hermit is, I know a lot of people know that we've been using that as a, a the higher higher beings as well i'm not even saying higher because they feel like they're equal but um higher dimensional beings as well but also the hermit too notice the door and how it was locked how do you get in you get in by going within this is information that we already had within us and are already starting to expand on but my underlying energy is so cute so it's the fool and look at the trumpet in her mouth it feels very very angelic and it feels very very divine oh, that's exactly. um, but I, that thing is so beautiful. And then we have three pentacles. This is going to really start to get us, uh, whenever we have pentacles, it's physical manifestation too. It's really going to start to get our wheels turning. Oh my God, if I say wheels one more time. I, it's funny because, I mean, I'm sure everyone who sees things in their head, they're like, oh my God, why am I seeing this? Well, over and over again, I keep getting the wheel too. It's all of us using our wheels to come together to create the new grid, to create this new way of being. It's almost like that show is getting everyone's wheels turning in order to talk about it and start to co-create together. Because this is quite literally a co-creation card. And they're throwing a lot at us in this show. So I'm getting like, I'm getting like almost everything in there is stuff that they did not want to come out. When I say about they, I say the ones who, the powers that, that were be, we're going to call it were be because they not be anymore <laughs> so that's interesting i want you guys to take a look at that card so this is going from dark to light this is showing we're going from the dark to the light with this two of pentacles and at the end of it is the sun so yeah i'm getting that we're getting the truth shown to us with that but also too we're going from a 3d realm full of disappointments but we also have these blessings coming up in the future and we're taking back our power so i yeah, i'm going to go with a yes on that amazing we're going to have i'm going to have to watch it now Read all it. right so, so taylor dana wants to know how you scan for implants because she was curious how you were able to find my implants in me Okay. Um, so this is, this is a tool that I have in my tool belt, not saying that anyone can't do it for themselves. So I would recommend putting yourself in a very, very peaceful state, lay on your bed and you can intuitively feel things in your body. Now, sometimes, I mean, like for me, when I had one of mine, I noticed that when I was talking, my body, I kept reaching up to cover it. Like it was weird. It was like, it was blocking off what I needed to say. And I kept reaching off. So that's your body telling you. Also, I always can feel them when like, not an implant, even like, even like a cord or something on my solar plexus. Um, it can be nausea. Again, remember we're going Going through ascension symptoms too so it, it's very hard to discern and decipher what everything is in this now moment but another tool that you can do is pendulum um how big the pendulum spinning is normally like an open chakra and if there's something that's like buzzing or doing something funky a pendulum will kind of like buzz almost over it but for me whenever i scan i can see them so i can look at some actually i just got this for someone so if someone like feels like this is something they can do draw okay this is weird sorry bear with me since i can see in my head i was just thinking automatic drawing like when you're remote viewing too so uh, draw like a body <laughs> you know this sounds silly like it, can, it doesn't have to be good it can be a head a throat the shoulders and then draw the body all the way down to the feet 
and almost like move through it with your pen and be like, whoa, feels like something's there. It feels like something's there. It feels like something's there. Um, I, I can see them and I can feel them energetically. So as far as for other people, you could definitely try and see if you can do that or if you feel anything on you. And also the weird thing about it is like, if you're like, well, I feel like I have this on me, just check. You, you actually, like, if you are already feeling like you have something, you, you might. Like you really yeah. might. So trust your own gut and intuition, of course, but there's little tools. Like, I don't know. I feel like someone who's asking needs to draw like a body because they're really good at putting it to paper and they'll be able to get it that way. So that might help someone who who's curious in the, in the, in the viewers of yours. And that also comes down to subtle body as well, which is something yeah. that we, we, we ground. You know, a lot of us, we, we have to, we talk about this in yoga. You have to get the gross body, which is your, your like physical body to then, to then understand your subtle body. And I think that the more and more you understand and go inside your body, you're going to start to tap into that subtle feeling and Taylor is right. When you have a tracker, you feel it. Mm-hmm. You know, when I had it in my neck, that whole thing, and I'll, I can, I'll tag those videos down below. If you guys remember, I couldn't eat, like literally would go to put food in my mouth and my jaw would block. And a lot of that had to do with what had been placed in my neck. Um, and that of course was removed by the Pleiadians, which my neck was sore and it was sore the next day as well. Um, but I've had them in my back before I've woken up and I felt them and I just say, get it out, remove it. I don't consent. Um, and, and it, and it usually goes, that one was pretty big. So it was, it, I had to have assistance with it, but, um, but yeah. I was going to say, I've, had, I've asked assistance for removal for mine too. Cause I woke up one day with a big bruise right on my forearm. And what mm-hmm. I did is your pendulum reads your higher self. I just asked, did, did I have a implant put in me last night? Because I woke up with this big bruise. I slept all the way through the night. It's not like anything was around me where it can hit me. And, and it hurt. It was, it felt like something was underneath there. So I just, you know, I just, Ask the Palladians to please have it removed that following night. And um, the next day I woke up and the bruise was going away and the pain was gone. Yeah. And, and you could scan your, your chakras too. Like even if you don't know how necessarily to do that, just picture the colors, like picture the purples up here and go into it and be like, is there anything in here that doesn't belong? Well, they put one in my brain when I was a kid, it was between my left and my right hemisphere. Um, and then like, I went down to my sacral chakra, which is orange. So you could just picture orange and you go, is there anything in here that doesn't belong? And I got a hook, um, like a ship hook. It was weird. It looked like an anchor almost. And then I was like, oh, I have a hook in here. And my periods were really bad. I'm so sorry to say that, but like, okay. th- it was like, they changed something changed. So body changed too. Like, so I know, like, just pay attention to your body and Steph had a bruise too. And then Bryce couldn't eat. Those are all signs of something not quite being right somewhere. So just trust that too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I wonder if hair loss has anything to do with that too. Cause I lost a ton of hair a couple okay. years okay, ago. So with I actually, I asked Tamara that question this morning because I've gotten that a lot. And she said, and I'll see what you girls say about this because some people thought it had to do with the crown chakra. She said that, no, the head is just like reflexology with the feet. You need to go to a Chinese uh, like herbalist or medicine man. They can look at different parts of the head that correlate to different organs. So if you're losing hair, you need to go and have somebody look at what are you could probably look online to see like what area is what. Um, she said like the sides of your head are like your lungs. He's so, too. Yeah. So if you're losing hair, I would go and look up that and see what that is, because that might be an organ that needs some tender love and care. And that's not to say like something's wrong with your organ. All of our organs are associated with different energetic responses as well. So like the kidneys are fear. The lungs are, I think tomorrow said those are like devastation from loss. Like when you, someone passes. Um, and so when you start to get to the root of why a certain area is weak, you can then start to heal that area. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm supposed to say something from my team. Um, they, they don't want to instill any, they want you guys to know that these all will not be allowed. And these things are not okay, accepted. Um, and that they will all be deprogrammed and able to be removed very soon here. So my, my Palladian family just doesn't want people to think like they're going to have to experience this much longer. And my Palladian team doesn't want, like, this is something that will be taken care of. And any assistance on a ship will be declared, like, well, I'm getting emotional. Uh, they're telling me declared for the highest good, declared for the highest good. So I just, I just want you guys to know what my team is saying too. That's awesome news. 
I know. I love them. I, I love them too. And every night I send love up to them because I know they're above me. <laughs> yeah. yep. I feel out. it. I feel their vibrational frequency coming down. It's been, I'm telling you guys, once this is over with this battle or uh, I'm dealing with, and we can talk more openly about it. I really want to do a big show about everything that's happened to me and you guys with these off worlders, because asking you shall receive seeking, you shall find knock on the door shall be open unto you. I've been wanting to meet them and now, hey, now they're there. there. So <laughs> yeah, they're very loving. They're extremely, I'm, I'm so they don't want to scare you. They don't want to scare you. They don't want to terrify you. They don't and, that's, and that's also the thing too. If these beings, they won't, they won't. No they won't they'll 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 leave you subtle hints like um they won't they won't come it's don't be yeah it won't be yeah. like that it doesn't no they're not be like boo i'm your family no no yeah. think about the bible when the angels came down where they say yo don't be afraid man it's me it's cool you know like that's kind of how the it's, cool, man. it's cool man it's just me don't be afraid don't freak out don't crack your pants it's me i'm a good guy you know so so yeah absolutely absolutely all right. So Kelly wants to know if she will become financially independent and live by the shore. I think you're going to become financially independent because I think we all are. Yeah. There's that karmic. Oh, keep, I mean, well, this goes full circle to what I bet Steph's going to say too. Keep visualizing it. Oh my gosh. Like feel yourself every night before you go to bed. And it doesn't have to be every night. You're, it's not like don't make it a routine so that it's painful. Make it a routine so that you're enjoying it. Like every night before you go to bed, picture yourself touching the sand with your toes. Picture exactly how your house wants to look. Like almost like you're there right before you go to bed because that's a really nice like a uh, shift into your dream yeah. space, into that manifestation point of the astral and dream space realm too. Yeah, so they're saying feel the sand on your toes and I'm hearing you will feel the sand on your toes and she's going to be financially independent, uh, independent enough to do it. She can do it. She's done a lot of work to get there. I feel like she's had like her. I feel like her spiritual awakening might've been really, really difficult or financially. It might've been really, really difficult at some point, but, but yeah, she's about to really burst into her independence and sovereignty. Like Bryce said, everyone is, but this, this feels like this. She's like one of my favorites to come in the nine of pentacles because she's so independently sovereign. She like, doesn't care. She, nothing can touch it. Nothing can affect her. And also like connection with nature too. If you look behind her with the birds as well, this is beautiful. So picture it, picture you're there. I'll let uh, Steph take over from there. Cause I feel like she did have a hard time. Just say that. I'm also getting here, hear the, at night you lay down, see if you can hear the waves feel, you're feel the so soft air. You must be a uh, very, um, yeah, you, Bryce, you must, uh, you must hear messages and hear things. Like, I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. I, I, I've been, yeah. she hears things. I know she does. I know she does too. <laughs> she sends me messages and texts. I heard this. <laughs> it resonates with me. Um, also to Kelly, I heard, um, Bring yourself back to your childhood and, and try to imagine like a child is daydreaming in school or something. Um, start to, And that's part of manifesting is um, putting yourself into that like uh, daydream state where you're, you're just, you're creating and you're imagining what you want. And so I, I got that when um, the question was being read there, but I feel like, yeah, there's been some setbacks in her life now um, with these two cards and fives are temporary. So we're going into endings here. So ending of this, of these setbacks here with that 10. And I feel like um, you'll actually have decision, a decision to make. And we have six of pentacles. I almost feel like she's going to actually work by the shoreline, like somewhere yeah, like, on the shore. Like it comes together, like yeah. career with the fact that she's might be moving for a reason too. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's exciting. I'm so excited for Kelly because that sounds like what she wants. So I'm so happy for you. All right. So KS Wood wants to know what is her life purpose and what should she focus on? It's a pretty deep question. What's the name? KS Wood. I'm assuming it's a she. That's the, the name that KS Wood. If it's a he, I apologize. But Oh, wow. Okay. 
So what I'm being told is as far as life purpose, they want you to find your joy in the heart center, which sounds so cheesy, but you're going to have a life mission and it's going to come online very soon. So what they're telling me is they want you to realize that you have been fulfilling. I heard fulfilling all your contracts, fulfilling all your contracts. So you're doing a great job fulfilling all your contracts, but there's a bigger picture that's about to come forward to you and it's going to feel much more apparent and it's going to be like, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to blow what you've already been through out of the water. Cause I'm actually feeling like a lot, she had to let go of like a lot to get to where she is now. I know that sounds silly, but she, so she had to, so I just saw this like emptying herself out completely in order to let the divine in. So I don't know if she went through a crazy, I know a lot of us did go through a lot of crazy stuff these past couple of years, but she had to let go of a lot in order to get herself to where she is now. It's really pretty because I'm watching her fill back up like with a waterfall, but the light's a little more shiny and a little bit more bright, but the mission's going to come online, but let's see if we can get anything about it. So funny you say that. That's what uh, the second sutra of the yoga sutras is yoga to divrati narodaha. And it's about that narodaha means nothing. It's taking everything out of you, all attachments, so you can be filled with God. Yeah. So when you and said if anything, that, that's uh, Bryce, that's so cool. Yeah, I should have studied yoga. Yoga is <laughs> Richie Narodaha. That is like they'll say in the, like the modern yoga studies, oh, yoga is silencing the mind. That's not what Narodaha means. Oh. Narodaha does not mean silencing, it means nothing. Boy, take it out, unattached, so that God can come in. So spirit can come in. She's been, so she's already affecting the grid around her. That was one of her purposes. So she might feel stuck. So what I'm almost getting is like, she might feel stuck where she is right now. Um, these are all limitations we put on ourselves. Okay. So these are all things that we tell ourselves. People have told us to make us feel unworthy. I always like to say to the eight of swords, whenever she comes in, she's not bound by chains. She's only bound by her own mental body and her mind. This is just cloth. She can tear it off anytime she wants, but I think she's affecting the grid around her. Um, there is going to be financial abundance. that's going to be able to help her and assist her. And we're thankful for the incarnation and to the legacy of her family, because I'm seeing she was clearing karmic lines. So they want me to tell you, you were doing a lot. You were doing a lot. You were doing a lot. And it's almost like, let go of all these things you have on yourself because you've done it. You've done it. You've done it. You've done it. You'd be paid for it, repaid for it too. But I'm getting like the grid around her. She might feel stuck where she is right now, but that's going to change because she had to be there to affect the grid around her. So I'm seeing like three purposes already that she had incarnating into her family in the grid line too. Oh yes. What I'm talking about. I was trying to figure out what the three of cups was in this whole thing and then you nailed it on the head beautiful yeah yeah she's oh, been exploring <laughs> some ideas and she needs she's very intuitive and she's very independent she needs to figure out what her higher self is saying to her um because that's an independent card right there she's i feel like she's almost broken away from old ways with that card i know it doesn't mean that but that's what i'm hearing um and she's been exploring new ideas and trying to figure out what her sole purpose is. I feel like she might have some off-worlder um, contacts that are trying to reach out to her or she will be working with them in the future in some way. Um, so just keep putting forth the determination and put into your um, your future, like start manifesting your future. What, what resonates with you? What are some things that um, you like to do? Um, what brings you happiness? What is your, what is that called? The zero point that we've been talking about too. Yeah, and then yeah. um, it, it will just flow and you'll make it happen. I really quickly, I have to tell her, you just said flow. That's what this card is. So this is the path of the soul deck. Our higher self can understand it and it can translate it, but we actually don't know what it's saying if we look at it from a mental conscious level. But this card is called flow. Her soul is now in full flow is what this card means, but it also means she needs to figure out all these little things like you're saying that she's collected on the way. And like we said, she's already done three things. Like you have a bigger mission that's going to come forward and it does feel galactic. Um, so like Steph said, when it feels galactic like that, that could be off world travel. It could even be like, um, I, it, it's almost like picture it and picture yourself saying like what you see yourself doing even if it feels crazy because it's gonna match the new realm not the old yeah, right? i was just about to say that I and i've been telling a lot of people because a lot of people have been coming in um at me in the groups and everything what's my sole purpose well number one i can't neither one of us can tell you what your actual sole purpose is we can just kind of guide you in a little bit of a direction here but um what what 
what your sole purpose is, is something that lights up your heart chakra. Like I see the light coming from the heart center and yeah. is it music <laughs> or is it uh, mathematics? Like, is it science? But also to also note that what jobs might be present now might not be present now, but will be in the future. So if it seems like it's really like beyond the imagination, keep manifesting it because it actually probably exists in the new world. It's amazing. So Debbie wants to know how you actually find a crystal healer teacher, like someone to teach you how to use crystal healing. Do you guys have any, any, any suggestions for her? I taught myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I did, I did go to like, um, so I had a local crystal shop and I mentored under a psychic back in the day. But the funniest thing about it is whenever I did that, I only collected the information that resonated with me. So it, sometimes I actually feel like I would have been better off on my own because you have to relearn a lot of things whenever you start moving through things intuitively. And it's really funny because like, I remember like whenever I used to manage cosmetic companies, one thing I always loved was having girls who like, weren't so set by like cosmetic companies they came from before because whenever you have a new mind they move through it very very more intuitively and I actually that's why someone someone was talking about like um playing with cards and stuff like that and and learning cards and I'm like oh my gosh shout out to anyone who's trying to learn or anyone who's moving through it intuitively because that's the way we're going to start to do things now anyways we're all each other's teachers we're all each other's mentors there's no one above any anyone else and we're all intuitive but like if you have those intuitive gifts in the here now moment why not why not shine why not push forward and use those tools and for me I've been to those kind of people and all of them are great, but you're only going to take information that you want to take from yourself. So maybe start to find what you're drawn to first and foremost, what colors are drawing you in? Do you like calcite? Do you like, um, citrine is yellow. I'm seeing lots of yellows for her for some reason. And that's going to be her. Oh my God, that's weird. <laughs> so what I was seeing was her solar plexus and our solar plexus is the masculine energy that resides within us. And it's also our confidence it's our abundance power. and it's also our, our power. So yeah. there's something with like, she has her own power within to intuitively move through all of these crystals and begin healing. But like, if you want to, you can look up crystal healers, but make sure if you do that, you are very drawn to the person. Like I'm telling you, I don't go to, I don't just go to someone to go to someone. I am very particular about where I put my energy. So I need her to make sure if she is going to go to someone outside of herself, that she, she's really drawn to them and really excited about them. Right. I was given this book as a That's gift beautiful. from somebody. So I think this is on Amazon and Bryce, if I can find the link. The link yeah, I'll, yep, post it I'll try to find the link. There's other books too I found on Amazon that are on my wish list, and I can also maybe send you a couple links of those if I can't find this one. This this has helped me um, figure out a lot of stuff, and this actually teaches you how to use a pendulum too for healing. That's yeah. Crazy. So it, I mean, it's a thick book, and it's it's very. Oh wow! Got a lot of illustrations yeah. in it. So yeah, I'll I'll try to find that book, and then um, maybe that can help. What I, I know for me, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to learn the cards as well, the tarot cards as well. And what I do, and Stephanie and Taylor know this, is I follow all these different tarot card readers on YouTube and I watch them do readings. And I just watch them over and over again. And I watch the different ones. I watch how they each work with the cards. And you learn a little bit from each person. And I will say something I've learned with yoga, because yoga's got thousands of years of philosophy. And then we've got, you know, all these divination tools. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed. You're not going to learn it all in one day. It's not fun either. If you're, no, if, like, this is supposed to be fun at this point. Like exactly. it's got to be fun or else don't do it. <laughs> exactly. We're talking exactly. about this real quick. I am the most impatient learner that, that <laughs> impatient learners can be. If I can't pick it up in 10 minutes, I put it down in frustration. I'm just like one of, one of those people that is just like, I, I can't, I'm, nope. No, nope, I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of this. I will say this with the tarot cards. I have been the most patient learner. And the reason being is because I have a passion for it. And it's one of those things that I just, I love it. And I love it so much that I'm willing to be passionate. And I'm naturally like, um, I'm naturally patient with it. So Debbie, I just got a message. You've done this in a past life. That's what I was going to say. Were you? Okay, girl girl debbie you've done this before because because stephanie's read cards in a past life that's why she's picked it up so fast too i think debbie i think you're going to find when you start to learn start looking at this it's going to start coming back 
going to come out soon. Yeah. And, and I got that off world with the ace of swords. She has the power to do it because she has done it. But not only that, I just saw like crystals unheard of crystals unheard of. She even has knowledges of crystals that other people, she has knowledge of crystals that other people might not even have. And she just needs to connect to herself to get it out. It's really pretty. I just saw her like Debbie. sitting there and just, it yeah, was, good. yeah, you got you're it. Good, Debbie. You, you've done this before. So you're good. <laughs> yeah. Flip. You probably does. Yeah. Hair flip. Like, <laughs> girl boss. Like you've done this before, but I get boss babes. <laughs> you've done this. Yeah, right. So <laughs> one more question. And I think I know the answer. This is from candy. She wants to know if she's an intuitive or an empath. You can be like, okay. Both, so both I just watched her entire time. tool belt light up. You're one of those where it's like, you pick it. So I call it picking a tool. You can even do this. You guys can do this as a visualization at home too. I like picture. So sometimes it can be a blueprint or a hologram, however you want to picture it. But I picture like a giant tool belt and there's all these different tools in the tool belt. And you're like, Oh, there's my empathic one. Oh, there's my intuitive one. So you have the ability to access both and all, if not more and more, they want to say and more. So yes, but She's both. yeah. And I think they, those both kind of come together. Cause I think all three of us are both, I think they both kind of come together anyway. And I, you know, being empathic too, I mean, you have to be able to put boundaries up too as well, because you have to learn how to like shut it down sometimes, you know, this is, I feel like very empathic, this card right here. Cause if you look at the guy that's standing, he's being very, very generous. He's exchanging energy with the, with these two people that don't have a lot of money he's giving the pentacles or the money to those people so it's like he he's understanding he's, he's stepping down on their level which is being empathic is putting yourself in someone else's shoes and empathizing with them um oh i i did have the strength card in my hand um it fell out and flew over um so i feel like she's definitely intuitive intuitively strong and then this one is Hold on. I have it. It was on the tip of my tongue a little bit, what I was going to say. Um, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Oh, my God. Out of troubled waters. You're moving forward, basically, from the old life. Well, you know? yeah. If, if you're intuitive, if you're intuitive, you can see ahead. You can, yeah. you can, you, an intuitive person can dictate the outcome of all of their life because they can see ahead they're two they're always 10 steps ahead because they can see in the future you just got to trust what you see yeah <laughs> that's what we're learning now because yeah. we were all told we were and as you said that don't don't fight with yourself just know intuitively that you have both of those gifts and i'll remind you guys because tamara said this this morning as well and i think it's one of the most i mean she has so many brilliant things she says but you know, she always tells people like people ask, well, what's the difference between my gut feeling, my intuitive feeling, my gut feeling or fear. And she goes, that's simple. Fear makes sense. Sometimes that's intuition, great. gut feelings don't make sense. That's great. But you, you listen to that. That makes sense so much. That makes yeah. so much sense. And, and I want, I want, who asked the question? Can candy? candy? Candy. Yes. Okay. Um, I want candy to know too, that she doesn't have to just be one thing for anyone or even herself or put a label on it because she is an extension of the universe and she is all of those things. Yeah. And she is strong enough and intuitive enough and obviously empathic enough to access all of the information she <laughs> seeks within her. But not only that, like the gifts that are on the surface ready to come forward to. And, and Steph was getting, I bet you're, this might've been what you were going to say. Cause I saw that in my head whenever you were talking with the six of swords and to the clarity, like it's going to come online even stronger for her and become more clear for her too. These abilities are going to start to, sh I thought four, um, but there's might be more too, just to be honest. <laughs> well, I also want to point we're going Go through ahead. the ascension right now. Like we're actually in the process of ascending. So that makes sense that more we're starting to like realize things, yeah. you know, it's wonderful. It is wonderful. <laughs> and I want to point out too, we, we, we've been programmed under this notion. We have to have, um, we have to be all have to be alike. And that is so far from the truth. We are one in unity as you know, the human race and everything. But at the same time, like I'm reading a book called, um, Bryce knows about this, the Sophia Code. And a lot of what is said in that book, and I'm actually going to start reading it on my channel because it's a wealth full of information for the divine feminine, is that what one gift has, 
you know, what one person has for a gift might not look the same in the other person. And we're all, we all were created, our souls were created from the Mother Sophia God source energy. And we're all so specially unique. So also keep that in mind. We could have a whole host of different gifts, spiritual gifts, and the combinations might be a little different. Like my tarot card reading might be um, not as strong as somebody else's tarot card, but the, the another person's reading, I might be stronger than them, but they might have a stronger gift than one of my less strong gifts. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And if so, we're all doing the same thing, nothing would get done too. Yes. Yeah. And so we have all these different combinations. I'm seeing all these things in my head right now is it like almost like pentacles and each pentacle is just like a di different spiritual gift. And some of them might be in a different order than the next person. And that's okay because when you combine it all together, it makes a huge spark of, yeah. of light. That's yeah. Absolutely. And that's like you, I, Catherine Edwards has talked about sports. Like it's like sports teams. If everyone was, I'm not a sports person. If everyone was the person scoring the goal. Yeah. No, no one would be scoring the goal because you have different parts. Does that make sense? I'm not a sports yeah. person, guys. Like, um, We're a team. We're a yeah, team. You're a team. Mm -hmm. You all have different jobs to do. I like watching skateboarding though, but that's more of a singular. <laughs> really? Yeah. I love I'm watching. Awesome. They're going to break their neck. <laughs> and I love watching swimming and I love watching, um, oh. I like watching the, the more acrobatic type. Cause I love the I, it's, I I love the human body. Human body fascinates me. So I like seeing what they can do with their bodies. I just don't like the whole like go sports team, like shoot them all. You want to know something crazy? So when I was a kid, uh, I had a lot of fears because of the entities and stuff like that. I was afraid of the human body, which makes me really like, doesn't that all add up now? Like why I was afraid of it, it all makes sense now, doesn't it? I mean, your body exactly. fascinates me from an energetic perspective, like how the body knows what to do, what it does. And yeah. That's yeah. amazing. That's funny. You're scared. You're like, body? Oh God. There's there was two circumstances. I had a little friend who had a toy and its brain was like sticking out, you know, one of those toys. Oh, we and yeah. Yeah. And I was bawling. I had to have my mom come pick me up. They were used to it at that point. Right. And then the other one is we did this huge fair at school. I'm traumatized from school. Apparently guys, sorry, this huge fair at school. And you had to walk into the different parts of the body. And I remember just being on the floor like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> who had to go to the colon? That's what are these humans. <laughs> I used to be definitely afraid of B L O O D like definitely oh, really? afraid of it yeah you were in the medical field oh I, I overcame it yeah i overcame it and i actually did minor surgeries in office oh my God. and i enjoyed all of it <laughs> see i can handle <laughs> i can handle when like if you watch you know, i don't know if they still put this on tv but they would show surgery sometimes on tv don't remember that like i can oh, handle yeah. it yeah like, i used to watch them you i can't to, handle it yeah maybe i'm old but you used to be able to like watch them I can handle once the human body is opened. I just can't watch it being open. Like <laughs> I, can, yeah. I can do, I can do that. I bet I you have open. to. Yeah. I know how to even suture people up. So if you need, if you have a laceration, when all of this stuff goes <laughs> down, come see me. So I'll show, <laughs> I've been training myself. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you guys. I have a scar on my stomach. If this, if this looks awful on camera, I'm cutting this part. I have a scar on my stomach right there. Y'all see oh my that? Gosh, place. That was when back in the dark age, back in like the dark ages, back I had my, dark <laughs> well, okay. So it was my appendix. Oh, they, I love out, you. they took out, took out my appendix. Now, if you get your appendicitis, they like go through your navel or something. Like you don't even have a scar, Some but cute. I got a freaking they, like, they do a scope that goes yeah, in and like, removes see nothing. it. I got that sucker on my stomach. I've had it since I was 12. I'm 38. So I've had it for most of my life. It's like a smiley on your it, stomach. Well, <laughs> it's cute. well, I've had many people be like, what's that right? when I'm in like a two piece? I'm like, I got into a gang fight. What? You should. Okay. <laughs> 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 what? What? You well, need to my, get an emoji there. Well, my, and, and, and my, have my, smile. <laughs> my appendix had gotten tucked up under my colon. So they couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. But they, I ended up lying. They kept asking me if it hurt on the right side of my body. And I kept saying no, because it literally hurt everywhere. And I was in the hospital and it was bad. And finally, I like, lied to them because nothing was happening. I was like, yes, it hurts on the right side of my body. And they rushed me into surgery. And that's when they found it. And then I came out crying because I had lied. And my mother was like, no, it's fine. It's okay. You lied. We felt they, it almost burst. Well, anyway, mm -hmm. then when they sewed it up, it happened sometimes where the body fluid like gets in between the layers of skin. And so it kept swelling. And they had to go and like pop it. 
to get all the, I mean, it was the most disgusting. That is the wrong thing to do. I mean, this, I was 12. This was back in like, wow. how old was I? I was 12. No, I'm like, saying a shame on the doctors. They should have never popped that, but like, whatever. And popped it and got the, because it happens apparently sometimes, but my literal, I mean, this is a little 12 year old body, you know, 12. I didn't have like boobs. I didn't have like, a kid. <laughs> I don't even know if I shaved, you know, all of a sudden the stomach <laughs> just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger because oh, it was, no. it was very, but yeah, no, that, um, and I've actually had to, I didn't realize I I had trauma around that area until I started working on trans some transitions in Ashtanga because yeah. whenever, and this is for women who have had cesarean sections too, whenever they cut through, they're cutting through the muscle and that muscle is never going to quite get back together the way it was before. So it's considered a trauma. And I had to actually work through some stuff that I didn't realize I had associated with that issue. Now, I'm glad it happened because if you don't get your appendix out, then game over lights out. So I'm glad that they took it out, but um, I'm glad it was just my appendix. It wasn't anything like super serious. It wasn't like something with my colon. It was literally mm. just my appendix. But, um, but um, yeah, I, that you never know. Like every time something like that happens, you're looking at trauma and you have to work. There's, there's going to be some energetic um, static there that you're going to have to like yes. work through. So, it literally it, feels like that because you'll have like weird numbness and some oh, phantom yeah. pain. I've seen and, it on people's auras. I can see where they've been cut. It's it's really it's really fascinating, but it's also like oh, we have to work through this too, even though you don't think you have to. It's yeah, very interesting. I had spinal surgery when I was seventeen, and I have a big scar going down my spine right now, and I struggled a lot with that with um yoga. And it, it, um, and I actually, as since, since I incorporated some strength training through bar, I've actually shifted a lot energetically in my spine. So it's true. Like there's always, and whenever there's a weakness, there's an energetic tie to it with the body. And that's, that's why I'm fascinated by the body. I'm like, this is so cool. All this shit is because of your thoughts. No, so, <laughs> <laughs> it's all your thoughts. Um, you know, so, um, but anyway, ladies, I know you got to go hop on Zooplex show. Oh, I can't wait to watch. I you know, if, I, if I can't catch you guys live, I'm going to watch it again tonight. And we are pre-recording this, guys. This is going to air on Friday, but this is being recorded on Thursday. If you're not part of the Dark Outpost platform, there is a link always in my description box below. I think it's like $2 a month. And David, again, he got purged from YouTube back in the day when everybody did because he was so over the target. And so he has his own platform now and it, literally it's like $2 a month and it basically goes, that money goes to support the platform. And he also gives a percentage of it to um, organizations that he trusts that help young people. If you guys know what we're saying in this fight. So um, it's worth it. And um, we're not censored there. So we can say whatever we want. And David had, he puts out Monday through Friday, three to four hours worth of content with different guests. And Taylor is going to be joining Stephanie today on the Dark Outpost. Even though you guys are watching this tomorrow and it will have already aired, you can go on the Dark Outpost <laughs> platform and rewatch the episode. So I would highly suggest you guys doing that. What are you guys going to be talking about? So you can kind of tease the audience who aren't part of the. Psychic abilities. Remote viewing. Yeah. Cards. All the. I had some really Fun interesting show. information come in through my channel about remote viewing. So I'm really excited to kind of share that and see what he, so I want to see like your guys' our psychic standpoint. And I, I think he's more psych than he lets on. Sorry, sorry, David. Uh, but uh, I also want to see what he, with his information and knowledge he has, if it matches up with the visions I was getting, I think it'll be so, so fascinating. I'm so fascinated. So that's I was it. very, very strongly led to ask you to go on there. So I think <laughs> there's a very significant reason and um, I think it's going to be very enlightening to his audience because you bring a whole, a whole, I, I look at it like a huge crystal worth of information to the table. That's very unique. It's a very weird colored crystal. Okay. <laughs> but your Beautiful. vibrational frequency is so high that you draw people in to what you say, regardless of what you're saying. Does that make sense? And my, my, uh, my voice is like, my voice has little codes that come out of it too. But I wanted to like, I just wanted to real quick before we go, I wanted to tell Bryce is way more. I mean, I know people know you're intuitive and stuff like that, but like you are so in tune. It's really exciting to work with you because you get the same information I get. And then I wanted people to know Steph did a card. I let her pull a card for me. I was just like, let me just pull a card for me. And guys, I don't just do that. So that's a huge, like a huge thing. 
And she pulled a card for me and she held up the card and the card was freedom. And I won't share too much more, but she held up the card and she was like, well, it's a new deck. I might as well learn this book. And she started reading from the book. I watched her put the book down, hold the card up. And she goes, you know what? I saw something when I pulled this card and she said it, she saw guys, like, I kid you not exactly how I felt and what was in my head. And I was like, yeah, it's over. All my clients go to, go to Steph, like hands down. <laughs> what can I say, can you guys remember that we were, Stephanie and I were already in contact and we were trying to get in touch with Taylor and we kept getting <laughs> cut off from the same entity that's, you know, fucking around and, you know, she'll be gone soon. <laughs> but, um, but that, because I do think there's a trifecta here and I, I don't mean to sound like egotistical because I think there's trifectas everywhere with people, yeah, but you guys I are all. <laughs> we're all, the three of us have, have that, that as Stephanie was saying, those puzzle pieces coming together of mm -hmm. some, some badass spiritual, um, warriors for the divine and you guys do that with yeah. your friends too like if, if you have like a group of people that you are drawn to and you can talk about shit like this with get on zooms with them yeah. text them like be it's okay to want to even in the comments if you see someone you like and you're like oh my god they just said something that totally resonated with me why not why yeah. not at this point you're not traveling we, to them you're going on a zoom with them right yeah. we do the three of us do a lot of work together off we're on Zoom, but we don't film it, do we? We do a the lot thing of work. Is too, my busy. cards keep so saying this is a this is a W E A P O N getting together yes. with like minded yeah. divine feminine. This is the super W A W E A P O N. I can't spell in my head. We had to learn how to spell her. But my cards keep show. saying this. <laughs> My cards keep saying this. If you're in my groups and you resonate with a couple of ladies in the group, contact me so that I can maybe get you, uh, I'll get permission from the others, get you guys together so you can go off and do your own Zooms. I'd love to join in all the Zooms, but I'm only one person, so I can't do that. But if, like, I know that, you know, Kristen, who is very close with all of us at this point too, she's one of our subscriber family members, and she's branched off and, and has actually started her own group. Great. people and, and and if i can join them great sometimes i don't you know and, and keep doing that you know it's um it's raising the frequency and i keep looking at the world right now and we're all placed in different parts of the world and there's a reason we're not clustered together and the reason we're not clustered together is because we're a crystal grid it's and a grid this, and youtube the internet that's the, the battlefield, guys. And we have to shift the frequency of this internet. Think about YouTube as a platform. And I'm sorry to call it YouTube. I'll be careful with what I say. As a platform competition, things like that. That's not how we're going to go about things. We're yeah. going to do this together in a three of pentacles, three of pentacles, three of cups way <laughs> of trying to shift this energy of the internet too. And accepting that we're all healers, all helping. We all have gifts to bring. And instead of a competition, we shift it into, oh my God, look at what this person can do. This is so dope. Like, that's cool, man. It's how it should be. Every single person watching us has power. Yes. Use your power. And just because we're on a screen doesn't mean you don't have power. We have, we're all equal. We're all unified. So take, in, take your power back, dec uh, declare your sovereignty, and start doing your own work. Mm -hmm. And um, don't allow people to do your work for you. Do your own work. Do your own. If you have to have a dark night as a soul moment in order to do your work, get That's through okay. it. It gets yeah, you. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Whatever you have to go through in the here now. And I also tell this to a lot of my clients too. Like, it's okay. Whatever you have to, whatever you need to get through this earth plane at this here now moment, it is okay. And on top of it too, what I've found as a reader and, and from my sessions is that most of the time, whenever I'm telling people things, it's stuff that I, I'm just affirming. At this point, I'm just affirming. Like, yes, you may get little tidbits of something, but like, I, I'm here to just affirm and show you how powerful you are. And we're handing the torch over. I'm not, I, I, I'm telling you, we'll assist you and we'll do everything we can. But like, you guys have these abilities now and they're going to just become more and more apparent. Yeah, yeah it's that because we're peeling back the veil of everything. You're going to start finding your soul purpose. You don't need someone to tell you who what your soul purpose is. You will find it on your own. And once you find it, you will be, completely confident in it because it resonates in every ounce of your soul. It resonates in all, every single cell in your body and it lights up that heart chakra. Right. Absolutely. All right, ladies. Well, let's end this on 
he, again, again, on that, with that Bible verse from Esther, Stephanie. <clears throat> Perhaps you were born for a time such as this. People still dab. <laughs> oh, what's that? I don't know. I'm too, I'm too old. What is that? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Fortnite. I should know this. I have oh. a teenager son. Yeah, in one of our past lives i was i was taylor's mother so <laughs> i'm sorry mom <laughs> i'm like what i, I, I think you were mine one time too i don't know we probably played many roles man <laughs> um, i was thinking mic drop that 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 uh that quote in esther is like a mic drop to all those demons out there Mic like, drop that baby. perhaps you were born for the such light as this. always wins true always oh, and they're fighting so hard because they're terrified of you that gave me power in my fight that I'm currently in. This bitch just, is terrified of and me. And just say so. it out loud, too. Like, anything that's not for my highest good, you have to leave now. I send you away okay. with love, but you cannot be a part of this. This is no. not, a, you're not a part of this. No. That's it. Yep. That's it. All right, guys. So for next week, um, if we want to continue doing this, I'm actually going to put a post on the community tab um, to remind you guys to ask questions. So I have it all in one space so I don't uh, miss any questions. So I will be putting that up closer to uh, probably after the weekend, maybe Sunday or Monday um, for you guys to ask your questions for Taylor and Stephanie. And again, if you do feel like you want to give them a little tip, I will be putting that information in the description box below for them, for their work with you guys. And I'm so excited for everyone that they read for. I really, please keep us up to date with everything going on because this is so exciting. Like I'm so excited for everybody we read for because, oh my gosh, this new world is going to be such a fantastic one hearing what all these people's gifts and abilities and destinies hold. So thank you guys so, so, so much. And again, go watch them on the dark outpost. If you haven't already links in the description box below. All right. Bye guys. Love you. Bye.